much. So let's see how the polls are going, because that's what 2024 is all about. Winning the election, if you're stopping <laughs> fascism. Biden has dipped across months of NBC News polling. Trump has largely held steady. So now he has dropped from 49 percent Biden to 42 percent. And I love how they say that. I mean, it's, that's seven points. OK. And Trump has gained two points. Like, I don't know that I'd say, I mean, yes, steady, but like, oh, my God. I don't like neither. I went neither. Neither of these people. Did you see? So, Nobody by the way, hey, Nobody. Exciting, exciting news. Do you know Biden won Nevada yesterday? Mm. In case anybody was wondering, I think he was the only person on the ballot. Nikki Haley, however, was also on the ballot on the Republican side. And the only other person on the ballot, I have it here somewhere, but I also yeah. had to get rid of that. No All preference right, or something like that. Yeah, no preference beat her two to one. Like 62% was no, no choice. Yeah, no, it was worse than no preference. It was like none of these none of candidates. The, <laughs> none of the above. None of the above won by 30 points. Yeah. Um, so we should have a system yeah. where you cannot win the state if you lose to none of the above. Like that, you should have to keep trying. Let's get another candidate. Something. Something. Because, uh, you know, but, 70% of the people don't want the two people who are running. This is not, I, you could close your eyes, have 10 shots, spin around and point at somebody, two people, right. and find two better people than the ones who are. One of what? these two men is going to be the leader of the free world unless he croaks or they put him in jail. And they're doing what they did in 2020. They're pretending South Carolina win. Like, first off, <laughs> uh, how many people voted out there? Oops. 4%. 4, 4 oh of God. Democrats, of registered voters, voted in their election. In a but, state that's always going to be red anyway. Or not yeah, always, the state like, is going to go to Republicans. They're going to lose. But it's also on the Democratic side, extremely conservative. It's the most. It look. It, there are a lot of black voters there, so they they try to extrapolate. Okay, black voters in South Carolina, that means black voters across the country support Biden. But it's not the same black voter. People are not just because you're black. You think one way. South Carolina yeah. voters are very very conservative, and Clyburn in 2020. Uh, you know, he got them out to, to vote for Biden and they spun that as a win to say nationally, Biden, Bernie didn't have support. Black voters were against him and Biden was beloved by black voters. Which is so ridiculous because he won, three days later, he won the biggest, most diverse state in the whole country. Bernie did California. He won 51 of 55 counties out here. And they totally just memory hold that. And, yeah. you know. But it's just propaganda. I mean, you don't yeah. put that spin on things if you're the media, if you're doing your job as the actual media, you're beholden to the Democratic yeah. Party, which was MSNBC's whole gig, which is why it's surprising or telling, I should say, that MSNBC's own polling, which is always the most pro-Democrat, pro-Biden, pro-centrist, <laughs> has gone hard against Biden finally, like, they're finally anti. Let's show the clip here of how how good. When you see this kind of reporting on MSNBC, it tells me that they actually are going to pull the plug on Biden, and we're going to end up with somebody else at the end. Yeah. We ask folks, hey, if it's the general election and it's Trump versus Biden in our poll, Donald Trump now leads Joe Biden by five points. Compare that to the last time we polled back in November. Trump was ahead then, but it was only by two points. And it's even more significant when you look at it this way. Over time, we have been testing for five years now, going back to 2019, a Biden-Trump matchup. Remember, 2019, 2020, Joe Biden led. He led big in every single one of our polls. For the first time in November, Donald Trump pulled ahead in our poll, and now at five points, this is the biggest lead NBC has ever had in 16 polls for Donald Trump over Joe Biden. We did ask this question, Kristen. If one of these cases this year ends in a conviction, a felony conviction for former President Trump, would that change your vote? 45% said the next scenario, they vote for Biden. 43% for Trump. This is also something the Biden campaign obviously hoping for. Where, where are we at? There Over we here. Um, so that is really the whole game for Democrats. They are just hoping 
that Trump will be in jail, but still, he's not losing by that much. <laughs> Two points. And that's the general. Like, the general doesn't matter. It's and, all about the seven swing states. So that doesn't right. matter at all. All that matters in the election is the swing states. Like, you can cross all the other ones off. That's why they're called the swing states. They're the only ones that swing one way or the other. They go left or they go right. Or they go right or they go farther right is the new term we should use. But, but yeah, it, the, the evidence is so clear that this election is lost at this point, is the whole point. Like, but, every but, swing state is going to Trump. Yeah, it's lost. But on the way out, Biden, who says, well, you know, people, liberals always, well, he's not a dictator. That's why we like him. He's not a dictator. You know, and you're like, he could have done all these things by executive action. And then liberals will come back and say, well, he's not a dictator. But then he, as we know, we've said a million times, but like bypasses Congress to give more money to and weapons to Israel while they're committing a genocide, which makes us accomplices, makes him an accomplice, uh, complicit, um, you know, avoid a uh, broke 26 environmental laws to continue building Trump's wall, giving more money to the cops who will be there to enforce right. Trump's whatever he does <laughs> and the people who are protesting against him. And now this border bill thing, <laughs> okay, selling so out Dem migrants just so that you can is, continue bombing Palestinians. Yeah, their strategy is, oh, it's going to look like such a win for us in 2024 when we gave Republicans everything they wanted and they didn't vote for it clearly they just don't want to solve the border problem yeah so you're telling your base you're giving the republicans everything they want and it's not enough so where where is your defense of our position on the left or the center yeah. or mainstream america or all these marginalized groups you're just fucking with these bills or all the people that are hungry who are watching 115 billion dollars go to ukraine and genocide in Palestine like it is so insane and in that bill was the executive right to deport anybody you want and close the borders so and and not even executive right it was mandated that when certain you know when it hit 5000 undocumented people trying to cross it had you had to close the border for for 2 weeks 3 weeks when it yeah. hit 6000 it had to hit this other marker like yeah. It, it forced it forced inhumane policy at the border and democrats are like we look we want to do all this inhumane shit yeah, look what we did we did we did everything they wanted and they still didn't want it and now it, that's the beginning part like now they have there's no compromise they gave them everything and now republicans are saying well we're not going to do some left-wing bill i mean it's like obamacare right you run on, hey, we need universal health care, at least a public option. You scrap all of that. And with your supermajority, you do the heritage written Republican Romney care. And now the Republicans don't like that either. So like. No, it's, it's not it's only it's, going to remove the Republicans. It's going to push them farther right, like you it's said. The ratchet effect and we politics. already gave our position. And if that position didn't get what we wanted. If it comes time to negotiate the next position under the Republican power, because they're going to win the election. Yeah, that's where we're we'll going to be from. farther right than we were right now, which was not acceptable yep. to people on the left now. Yeah. And all that does is it depresses your base. And, you know, I feel like I mean, I know everybody who watches this understands that. And it's not that, as we know, Democratic politicians aren't stupid. They know exactly whom they're working for. It's never the left. They always want to compromise with Republicans, reach across the aisle. You know, they will crush the left as they keep moving further right. They, they talk about a strong Republican Party. They never talk about a strong left, the base of their party. And they sell out on every single issue. But I, I wish we could get through to liberal voters to understand that it is not that Democrats are weak. They're not feckless. They are doing exactly what they're paid to do. It's uh, it's look, if you can win an election as a Democrat with leftist stuff, they, they might maybe. But if it harmed anyone giving them money, they wouldn't. And all their money is coming from all the people that we fight against, that they publicly fight against. They're the ones funding their Harlem Globetrotter 
they're the Washington generals pretending 100%. to hundred percent to steal the oh 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 I didn't know he had all those skills and he dunked the ball the Republicans dunked the ball on us again. Didn't see that coming. Didn't see that coming. Lucy with the football. Oh, yeah. if only we had uh, a, a fair right, we would have won this fight. But the the right fought dirty, and uh, we we can't do anything about it. And then also, and I mean, I hate these sort of like hypocrisy that's always lobbed at Republicans because it's like they don't care. They don't care if you call them out on their hypocrisy. And so now I'm about to do it with Democrats. But like for Democrats to say, well, we we gave them everything and on the border bill. We sold out migrants who you know Biden ran saying that he was going to be more humane, which he certainly has not been on any level. Um oh my God, it just happened again. What is well, going no, on? Well, no, but we we <laughs> forced brain. so when debates come between Biden and and Trump, if that's right. what happens. Thank you for saving me. Yeah. Biden is going to have to say that he agreed with the position he put forward in this bill. Right. So where does it, where does that leave? So Trump as a Republican can say, so you agreed on this, these things on the border. So we don't disagree on that. Right. Right. That's and yeah, he's not going to out border Trump. Like Trump will get even more racist. And I mean, whatever, I, you know, it's like that thing of like, in 2016, I can't remember who wrote it. It's like Randy with two A's, I think. On um, I don't know, but it's just like Democrats are gonna look at the result of the 2016 election, take a look in the mirror, and say we got to get even more racist. And that's exactly what has happened. But what I was gonna say is the the idea of like holding out an issue that you don't really want to solve just to get more voters because it is an issue. Like what's happening at the border is an issue on so many different levels. They never want to tackle the root problems, right? The war on drugs, the, you know, are overthrowing South American, Central American countries, the, all like right. they never want to deal with any of that. Climate but, change. Yeah. Which is yeah. why I mean, like, half the people are coming because they're, I mean, there's, there's, there's in their country so are many reasons and many of them are caused by the US, but we're, they're never going to talk about US policy towards any of these countries. But it is an issue and it's never solved on either side. And the same with, you know, Roe. That's what so that's what I was saying is like the hypocrites of the Democratic Party saying, oh, like they're going to call out Republicans on not really wanting to solve it. But this is just the way both parties always work, because like right now, right. there's very little between Biden and uh, Trump that anybody could point to. But if you're Trump and you want to win and you want to deflate the Democratic base. When Roe v. Wade comes up, you just say, you could have done something about it. You don't really care, do you? I, as the dictator, I am, and the benevolent leader of this USA that I love would have, if that issue mattered to me, I would have used this power. I would have 100%. Done this. 100%. You know? and, and that would just deflate the, the left's base, you know, yep. the Democratic base. I mean, it. It's true, though. Like it's actually it is not true. that he would do it. I'm just saying that he would. He had. He would. He would we do have something. the power to do something about this. Yeah, thing. I mean, it, you Democrats know, do. they always talk about Republicans as being this great threat and fascism and democracies on the ballot. But when they're in power, they don't solve any of the problems, and they're powerless to do it. And Republicans are always in the way. And then when they're not in power, Republicans have all the ability to do everything that they want to do. Your mouth is moving, and nothing's coming out. It's delayed. I have some seriously important things to say. If you just sit back and wait, it's <laughs> no. so funny, Pat. Oh my God. I'm sorry. So uh, look, they're doing they're doing a lot. Don't. Don't knock him. This guy is going to solve the problem. <laughs> yeah. The next president of the United States, folks. The next president of the United States. I think they're going to bring Hillary back. They're they're doing that. We are doing that. Uh, now, don't call it a comeback. Um, I did just want to say on the Mexican border thing, if we could, because there were two other really disgusting parts. One was a carve out specifically about not funding UNRWA. It is the one organization that could possibly alleviate any of the pain that we and Israel are uh, inflicting. It's the largest aid group over there. And to unfund yeah. them now is it's criminal. Schools, hospitals. It is an act of genocide. And yeah. 
But then here's the other thing that I thought was pretty amazing. So this is Wait. from a box. Oh yeah, were you still talking? I'm sorry. Well, I I was. Who knows? But since we brought up Hillary, yeah. never forget. Oh. I just wanted to show this. This <laughs> this will live in infamy. Wait, is that Alyssa Milano? No, who is that? Listening in the dark. it's just a regular person. Oh. I don't know. They had a check, but Kleenex check, wine check, mm -hmm. and acid check, punching bag check, vibrator check. Come on, <laughs> that is check. isn't that that is Alyssa Milano, isn't it? Who was uh, that? I don't know. Maybe no, she recycled the, the old in answer. The dark. I just, I felt like it. Wait, is that Amber Tamblin? Who is Oh, it? yeah, I bet it is, which is the saddest thing in the world to me because she's married to uh to David, David Cross. David Cross, who's my one of my favorite comedians. Yeah, he's a brilliant and guy. Actually and a, a yeah. legit leftist. Like yeah. he and her don't agree on anything. I stuff. know. And they were actually one of my favorite movies of this past year, playing a couple um, called You Hurt My Feelings with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. It was so good. And they played a couple. Of, and she was great also. But um, she's another one that just came out calling for a ceasefire, which is like, wow, thanks for all of your, you know, strength and courage calling out for a ceasefire after the ICJ already said that it's a genocide. Um, okay. Do we have anything else? What about any videos? Where are we? We are two hours in. I feel like we've. Oh, I feel like we should, yeah. we should let people go. But what do you got? You yeah. got something? Yeah, uh, no. But I did want to talk about Dean Phillips, so we can talk about him next week. He had a good interview where he handled himself really well, also with Joy and Reed. But it's two minutes. It doesn't matter. But basically, he just called them out on like nobody. You know, she says nobody knows who you are. It's like, yeah, you haven't had me on the air for four months. How do you want people to know about me? And at least Republicans have a vibrant debate they are they have candidates they are you and he even right? said you guys have given cnn or msnbc have given town halls to republican candidates and not to any of the democratic uh people who are challenging and biden as much as i disagree with him on every Everything. policy he probably yeah. supports the one thing he's doing is getting some attention to call out the fact that biden can't win and i think that's why they're getting him on because it gives yeah. them permission to swap out at the, the convention for somebody who can probably maybe win. So it's like they, they, they're planting the seed. They're I like, think yeah, priming the could happen. Yeah. It's not a done deal, but I, I think we get Gavin Newsom at the, the convention. But I think yeah. so too. We'll uh, what, how, how are they going to deal with Kamala? That is going to be a funny, a funny moment. Um, all right. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Thank you to Julia Doubleday for coming on and sharing all of her knowledge with Wonderful. all of us. Love her. Yeah, she's great. Thank you to our members and those of you who are supporting us and sharing and uh, being so uh, active in the chat. It's really wonderful to be here with all of you. Going out on one good thing. Um, do you want to, I, I, I don't want to talk over you, but I yeah. don't know if you're paused or what. Uh, <laughs> am I here? I'm here. Yeah, okay. You're here. Oh, look I at do that. wave to, to check things. I don't know, but you're finally caught up. I, I don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, I have this fancy new computer. I can't blame it. So it's, it's and I have great internet. So yeah, I don't who knows? Know. But anyway, yeah. uh, a lot of you guys probably saw this clip already, but it's worth watching again. Cause it gives you some good feels. Anytime Nancy Pelosi gets uh hell, it's a good thing. And or we need to get all politicians. In power. Yeah. They should have no peace at all. They walk outside their door. Ever. It should be held to their car. It should be held to the restaurant they eat at. It should be held to their opera or whatever the fuck they're doing. And kudos yeah. to anyone making it their lives hell. So thanks, you guys. Night. Keep punching up. We'll see you next week. Russian apologists or Chinese apologists. Our headquarters is right here in the United States, and we don't want you giving any more money to Israel. Our bridges are crumbling. We have San Francisco has so many problems. We need the money at home. Congresswoman, we need the money at home. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Don't call us Russian apologists or Chinese apologists. You are an Israel apologist. You are an Israel apologist. Stop supporting.
Serving genocide. Stop Shame. 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 Shame on you. $1 million in NVIDIA stocks this week. She's taking Shame. my job.